we start with a, with a frequency sweep of our system. So we want to, to characterize our resonator here. It's a 1.8 megahertz, so it's a, it's a nice quartz. It's actually in air, but it has a high Q factor. You can do fitting both of the phase or on the amplitude. So to get here a, a quality factor of 18,000, a resonant phase at minus 80 degrees and so on. And so that would correspond basically to an open loop transfer function. So understanding the, how the system behaves before you close the loop. So let's say we just copy the center frequency. We, we, we enter it here. We see right away that we are at the maximum of the amplitude. And now if you do an auto phase, so basically uh, canceling the phase from the demodulator, we basically see the minus 88, which is actually very close to minus 90 uh, as we have. So we can also use a set point of zero. Now we move to the PLL. So we use DUT model resonator frequency because it is well suited for, for this type of resonator. So we enter, of course, Q factor. We, we pick a target bandwidth, in this case, of 1 kilohertz because it's a high frequency resonator. And that would correspond, let's say, to a 1 millisecond pixel dwell time. We see that the slope is negative. We, we copy that to the, to the PLL part because the, actually the phase was going down, so that's why it's negative. And before we close it, let's look at how the frequency behaves. And, um, and then we see, okay, that we have a, just a small glitch, let's say, and then we are uh, already at the resonance, which is exactly the, the one that we have measured in open loop, but now we are in closed loop. And so this closed loop um, is important to make sure that you have a white noise. So we have a, a Gaussian distribution of the noise as you see in the histogram. And from this histogram, you can deduct a standard deviation of 25 millihertz. So that's quite good for one kilohertz PLL bandwidth. So now let's leave the PLL on and do a sweep of the amplitude at the maximum of the resonance. So let's so we don't do over zero because then the PLL will unlock, but we do between 10 and 100 millivolts. And so now we have a, a maximum resonant amplitude as a function of uh, drive. So now we're not sweeping the frequency, we are sweeping the drive, the, the, the actuation drive. And then of course we have a nice and linear fit, which is what we expect even, even more from a, such a well-behaved quartz resonator. But then when you do the fit, we really get the gain. So the amplification factor, which in this case it's positive because it's more than one. And then we can use also for optimizing a second PID, which is going to be our AGC, so our automatic gain controller. So in this case, we use a DUT model with a resonator amplitude. Again, we enter resonant frequency and Q factor and then the gain that we have just measured. So here we see that the PIDs are positive in this case because the amplitude is, is getting bigger. Please note that the target bandwidth is bigger than, is smaller than the PLL. And the reason is because you want to make sure that uh, the PLL is at the resonance before you, you want to change anything on the amplitude. And then we again move that to the next, to the left hand side, um, just to make sure that we have uh, basically, we have 120 millivolt. And so we pick a, a set point of 100 millivolt. And uh, when we look now at the amplitude, when we close the, the AGC, uh, we uh, reach directly this 100 millivolt set point. And now just maybe for the, for the, for the sake of uh, for argument, let's uh, change the set point of the amplitude. So first we go into uh, auto range for the plotter. And now we really see this step uh, step response in the amplitude. And you see that the frequency is totally stable. And that's very important. So that's why we need to have the PLL a bit faster as well. And that ensures that the whole system is, is stable and behaving as expected.